This video will show you how to properly use the um, assembled layout from the under, under the scene number two project. Uh, so what we're going to do is we are going to create a brand new file. And we are going to go ahead and use a 10 by 8 inch piece of wood. Um, it's going to be a 3 quarters of an inch thick. Uh, of course, everything's in inches. And we're going to go ahead. We're going to use a very high um, resolution. I'm going to click OK. We're going to flip over to the 3D view, and then we're going to go to our clip art tab. We're going to go to our design and make projects folder, and we're going to slide all the way down to under the C number two. And we're going to double click on our assembly. Now, our assembly, of course, is smaller than our job space. So what we're going to do is we're going to size it up by clicking on the drawing tab, and we're going to scale it up to be the width of it is going to be nine and a quarter inches. And we've linked the X and Y together, so it should be proportionally sized up. So I'm going to click Apply. It should fit nicely in there. Now, why I chose the nine and a quarter was because that will leave enough room around my model to um, fit my quarter inch end mill when I do my roughing. Uh, it just makes it easier to visualize. Click Close. And now what we're going to do is go to the 2D view. And because we're going to have a hard time laying out our text, it just happens to be that with this particular model, the flat space ends up looking white in your um, 3D view. And so you really can't tell where the edge of it is. So we're going to get uh, VCarve Pro to give us an outline of that component. So we're going to go ahead and click on the modeling tab. And while we have that component selected, we're going to go ahead and get a vector, an outline vector for that. And there we go, a nice vector, which is perfect. Now we're going to go ahead and lay out our text. So we're going to go to our drawing tab and we're going to go to our text box and we're going to type in a Van Morrison quote that is smell, sorry, I spelled that right. Smell the sea and feel the sky. The next line, let your soul and spirit fly. Perfect. And we're going to use Georgia as our font. And we're just going to leave it um, uh, unbolded and not italicized. And we're going to click apply. Oh, and we're going to make sure that our text alignment is centered. Now, that's sort of important because when we go to make sure that our um, text is centered uh, from left to right in our model, um, it helps a lot. So we're going to click apply and vcarve will pop in our text for us and we're going to go ahead and click close and what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to just nudge it to the top of our model we want to center in the first line inside of that blank space and that looks pretty good actually so we're going to right click on our text and we're going to go down to break text block into lines and then what we can do is we can select the second line of text and we can drag it down to the bottom and that's perfect. That looks good to me. So let's go ahead and develop some tooling for this. So we're going to flip to our 3D view. We're going to open up our toolpath tab. And we're going to go ahead and set up our material. So we're going to set our material. Now, with this particular model, the way that it's been modeled, is you'll see that the back of this, uh, where the sand is, actually lays right on your modeling plane, which is perfect. Um, for this layout, but you have to deal with that properly in your material. So this can't lay on the back of your material because if you do and you machine it, it's going to be super thin and it's not very rigid and it's not going to hold up very well. So what we're going to do is we're going to position our model properly inside of our material. So right now, um, the thickness of our material is three quarters of an inch. We set that up originally when we set up our job. Our, our zero plane is going to be, we're going to zero our machine on the top of our material. Now you'll do that depending on how you set up your machine, you'll decide, decide that. And also where your datum is. I'm going to use the center, but you may choose to use the bottom left or bottom right. It's up to you or any of these four. And we're going to position the model. And the light brown here on this is, is, is our actual model. And you'll see as I... If we turn our model on the side, you might be able to see these green lines here. Well, that's our actual material. And as I move my model up and down or the layout inside, you can see where it moves up and down. 
Now with this particular layout, because these are flat and they're the highest spots on my model, I want to jam it right at the very top. And then I have all of this extra space as really being backing and it will thicken up this space here um, at the end, or excuse me, at the, at the bottom. So we're gonna go ahead and look straight down on our model. And we're only gonna do that because it just makes it just a little bit easier for me to be able to see what's going on. And we're gonna go ahead and uh, make sure we have the gap. We have to tell VCarve that our gap is gonna be at the bottom of our job. So this is the gap, the extra material, and we're going to click OK. You're going to want to change the rapid Z gaps and so on based on your machine, but for me, um, these are fine. I might I might actually change just to make a nice even number. I might change these to a quarter inch. Instead, we're going to click OK. So that's all set up now. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start off by doing our roughing pass. We're going to click on this. We're going to use a, a quarter inch end mill for our roughing pass. We're going to use the model boundary. The offset is going to be a quarter inch. You remember when I first set up um, the size of this, um, I left enough room to fit the, uh, the cutter in between uh, my model and the outside of my job space. And everything else is here. We're going to leave a little bit of an allowance behind, so there'll be a little bit of material left behind. And we're going to go ahead and calculate that. And we're going to preview the toolpath as we move through this. So we're going to preview this visible toolpath, and that's what we're going to have when we all when we get done our roughing. So if I turn on his edge, it's kind of interesting as it is. We're going to close that. We're going to go ahead and do our finishing pass. So we're going to use a, a 1 8 inch end uh, ball nose, excuse me, for this. So we're going to use the model boundary. We have our offset of a quarter inch again, and we're going to go ahead and oh. In this particular case, um, we're going to use the raster um, strategy, but we're going to change our raster, ang raster angle, excuse me, to 45 degrees, and we're going to calculate that. Some people like to use the 45 degree on their finishing pass, um, and so in this case, we'll just show you how that works. Instead of moving back and forth while it's doing its machining or working from the center out, it's actually going to go at a 45 degree angle all the way through this. And you can see the tool path lines here. And when we preview that, you'll see that it cleans it out quite nicely. And it's looking pretty good. Great, perfect. Okay, now we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do our V carving. So we're going to flip to our 2D view. We're going to grab both sets of text, flip to our 3D view. We're going to do our V carving. We're going to use um, just the 90 degree V carve tool, which is great. Um, our start height is at zero, um, which is great because we're just going to machine machines straight, do our V carving straight onto these two flat areas. And that's all great. And normally we would project the toolpath onto our 3D model, but in this case we don't have to because these are flat and it's, it's, it's perfectly flat to the surface of our board. So we don't need to worry about that at all. So we're just going to go ahead and calculate that. We'll preview that. Looks pretty good. Now we're going to go ahead and do a cutout pass. So we're going to close this. Now originally back at the very first when we, I was laying this out, um, we had gut and V-carve to give us an outline, right? You know, of this uh, component. Uh, if you were going to do this with a uh, a layout that you were assembling yourself, then you had to select all of the components that make up the outside perimeter of your model. Go to your drawing tab, or sorry, go to your model tab, and make sure that you get an outline before you do this step, because you need that outline to create your cutout pass. We're going to go ahead and use the profile tool path for our cutout pass. We have this outline selected, so that's great. Now, we've already machined down um, part of the way through our material, um, so we just need to start from the bottom of that, um, and we're going to move on. So if you don't remember how thick your, um, uh, your model is or your component is, then you can select the model. You can go ahead and go over to your drawing tab, or sorry, your modeling tab, and click the wrench. And it will tell you that it's 0.462. So we're going to start this at point, uh, 4, 0.422 or 266. And then we're going to finish this, whatever the difference is of our material. So to make our math way easier, we're going to start at half an inch down. And we're going to finish up with a quarter inch. Okay, so those two together add up to the 
three quarters of an inch of material that we have. And we are going to add in some tabs. We need to select that vector again, add in some tabs. We're going to edit our tabs. We're going to use four tabs. That's great. So we're going to add our tabs. And when we're in this mode, we can go ahead and slide these to where we want them to be. So you want to put the tab somewhere that's convenient. The corner isn't the, probably the best spot for cleanup. So we're just going to kind of move those around, something like that. Perfect. And we're going to go close. And we're going to uncheck so it goes away. Great. Let's go to our 3D view, and we're going to go ahead and calculate that. And we're going to preview that toolpath. And you'll see that it cuts down nicely, and we just have our two tabs. So we can pop this off when it's all done off our machine. Just run this, uh, or we can cut these little tabs off, and they're in great spots for easy cleanup. And there you have, all ready to, uh, to finish. Hope that was helpful.